Today we're going to revisit our media computer. This is the computer we constructed for media purposes. This computer has an AMD processor sitting under a passive heatsink. It has 8GB of memory and a small Pico-style power supply. What we're going to look at today is how we designed and constructed this device. What we started with was this ITX motherboard. Now I picked an ITX motherboard because I wanted the computer to be as small as possible. And since I'd already used MakerBeam to construct cases, I wanted to build a case around this motherboard. Enough to fit the motherboard in, but to be as small as possible. So the idea behind this approach was to create a case in which the motherboard would sit, taking up the minimum amount of space, but still being large enough to actually allow a good airflow. However, with all small cases, there have to be some compromises. The power supply had to be small, so I had to look at using one of the Pico-style power supplies, like these. Now this particular one is an HT Plex power supply, which slots in to the motherboard using the 24 pin. Now this particular model, which is slightly too high for the size of the case I wanted, so I went for one slightly smaller, but along the same lines. Also to allow airflow, I wanted a small cooling fan to allow air into the unit and a second fan to extract air out of the unit. And with Maker Beam, you have quite a lot of flexibility of how you can actually design the case. Using a unit like this, I can quite easily set the outside of the case to allow access to all the ports. And as Maker Beam has a groove cut in all sides, this allowed the sides of the case to be constructed and slid into these slots to save any additional nuts and bolts. Because this two mil, just over 2mm slot will allow perhaps an acrylic, a polycarbonate, or in my case a polypropylene sheet, which was perforated to fit into it, this allowed the case to look like this. No bolts, no nuts visible. And on the front of the case, I decided to have a power supply with no light on it and two very small LEDs to indicate power and hard disk activity. So that handled the processor, the memory and the power supply. But we still had the dilemma of where on this unit to fit a hard disk. Now a traditional 3.5 inch hard disk would obviously be out of the question because it would not fit into the case. So the next choice down was a two and a half inch disc. Again, a two and a half inch disc would take up quite a lot of room. So what I've gone for was an M SATA card. M SATA cards were considerably smaller. I had no way of fitting an M2 card to this motherboard as it had no M2 slot. However, it does have two SATA ports down here. And my M SATA card, I can fit into an M SATA to SATA converter board, this small board here, and connect that to the SATA port. This gives me the single volume I need within this computer. 
So having sorted out the M SATA card, the intake and outtake fans, the memory, the small Pika style power supply, it was merely a matter of bolting it all together. However, for the power supply, it does need an external power brick because there isn't room inside a case of this size for a traditional power supply. And this, at the time I constructed it, was the smallest commercial available motherboard you could purchase. Now that the later smaller motherboards are available, the Pico style motherboards, I'm now looking at constructing possibly the same design of case, but with an Odroid board in it. The ITX motherboard here is 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters. If I use an Odroid board, which is 11 centimeters by 11 centimeters, this would give me considerably more room at the side of the motherboard. And I may well be able to fit in one of the HD Plex internal power supplies, thereby doing away with the external brick. There is enough room in this case for the minimal cabling that we actually need. And with an Odroid board in here, which is considerably smaller, we could fit in the power supply and the cabling. My last challenge in designing this was to find a way to fit the top of the case. I didn't want any bolts or nuts actually showing, and there wasn't enough room to slide the lid in into this groove, because we're already making use of this groove for mounting the SSD, the vertical supports, and the cooling fans. So I needed something that fitted on top of the case. And I went for a magnetic approach. These white strips you see here are paper steel. Very thin steel mounted on paper with an adhesive backing. These adhere to our case and on the lid we have a magnetic strip running all the way around the edge. This allows us to fit the top quite nicely with no bolts showing. And it has the added advantage in that it doesn't slide off and it sits there quite nicely. The final touch was on the base of the board to put in a perforated sheet to allow air to come in. This was bolted to the board since these bolts are never seen and some large silicon rubber feet to stop any vibration from the fans coming through onto the surface on which it sat. So this gave me a small case in which we had a media computer which will quite happily run Amazon Prime, Netflix and YouTube. It did take a long time to think about the design to get everything in the correct place so we could actually have something that would work. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.